My name is Roger Lin and I'm a designer of electronic music products. I'm best known for the first digital drum machines that I made uh, back in, uh, starting in 1979. Uh, there was one called the LM1, one called the Lindrum, Lin 9000. And those were used on lots of uh, pop records in the 1980s by people like Prince and Madonna and then um, uh, and others. And then also I made in the 90s, I made the uh, MPC drum machines with the company Akai. And those were, were uh, used very heavily in, in uh, hip hop music production and other dance related styles. And then I shifted over in the 2000s to making uh, products for guitar. It was called the Adrenaline Pedal and these did a lot of the uh, electronic music transformations that people had done with keyboards or modular synthesizers and applied them to uh, guitars. And now uh, what I'm doing now is, is uh, making an instrument called the Linstrument, after my last name, which brings attempts to bring the expressive performance control of acoustic instruments to electronic sound as an alternative to the MIDI keyboard, which is just a bunch of on-off switches. So that's a nice little summary of what I do. And we're here in, in my home in Los Altos, California, which is in the heart of Silicon Valley. Well, it's, it's a great enabler, as it is in all other uh, forms of society. In particular, in music, as we've all seen, MIDI has allowed a dramatic improvement because it's allowed the separation of the human interface of the musical instrument from the sound generation. Before MIDI, if you wanted a violin sound, uh, you had to play a violin, which is very hard. You'd have to hold it between your chin and your neck and get all kinds of muscle pains by just to get a violin sound. And you'd have to spend years just to play it in tune. And then if you wanted a saxophone sound, you'd have to spend a few more years to learn where the notes are in a saxophone. In other words, the human interface was very much limited by the need for the instrument to make acoustic sound. MIDI changed all that 34, 35 years ago uh, because you could choose your human interface, which is usually people use the standard MIDI piano keyboard, and then you could separately choose your sound. Of course, the problem we found out is that MIDI keyboards on off switches are not very well suited to creating the wonderful performance gestures of a violin or a guitar or a saxophone. And that's what's changing these days now. But um, the main important thing is, is that uh, technology has allowed us to do not only that separation of the human interface from the sound generation of musical instruments, but also has allowed us to record information uh, as you would on a tape recorder, but things like change the sound of the performance after you've recorded it, and many other things as we're all aware of. So technology has been a wonderful boon for music in general, and, and clearly if you listen to music today, it's influenced just about everything in music. I would say that uh, they're tremendously important. One thing that's so interesting is that certain sounds, instrument sounds, stand the test of time. And over the centuries, we've learned that while many instruments died away, the sound of the violin and the cello and the saxophone and the clarinet and, uh, and so many other instruments that in the Darwinism of musical instruments survived in the current uh, orchestra or in the current band. Uh, guitar is another one, of course, piano is another one. But these are good for reasons that people have agreed these are great sounds. And so in synthesis, we're exploring new sounds, but sometimes we're forgetting that there are sounds that are, have wonderful qualities. And by the way, we've all heard the violin and performances for many years, and when we hear it again, whether it's a real violin or a swam instrument, there's an emotion that happens. Not only is it a good sound that has survived the test of time, but we've heard so many beautiful performances with it. So all that power is packed into each swam instrument. And when I play the swam instruments with my instrument, and I'm able to do those same violin gestures like vibrato or portamento or glissando uh, or timbral changes. It raises an emotion in me that I could not have because I don't know how to play the violin. So I think the swam instruments are tremendously important. Nobody else has done 
what audio modeling is done. Uh, it, it, it's so much better for expressive control than samples because samples are just snapshots. But it, it is so wonderful to get a sound that is better than any sampling instrument, but to have it be so malleable and to be able to change timbre and expression and pitch and all be so accurate. So I think it's just wonderful. And SWAM instruments have really shown the power of instrument to my users, and so many of them play the SWAM instrument. So I have uh, nothing but gratitude, audio modeling. Well, one thing I'm seeing which is very gratifying is the increasing popularity of expressive instruments like my Linstrument or Rolly's Seaboard or the Hawking Continuum or other instruments. And it's, it is so wonderful to see this because I've missed expressive solos. In popular music, I've missed expressive solo performances in music for picture, in music for dance. It seems like because everyone's playing music with on-off switches, which is what a MIDI keyboard is, it seems that music has gotten more boring. And most importantly, if you listen to all electronic music these days, it's being used for background music. Background for singers in pop songs, background for picture in music for picture, background for dance in electronic uh, dance music, EDM. And so I think what is so exciting is to see this adoption of expressive instruments and expressive sound generators like the SWAM instruments. And so what I see also, uh, what I'd love to see on top of that, the SWAM instruments are wonderful for perfectly emulating uh, the original orchestral instrument. And there's nothing better, there's nothing that comes close. What I'd love to see is because audio modeling's SWAM technology is so incredible, I'd love to see a physical modeling synthesizer come out of the audio modeling company that would use your technology, but for creating new sounds that have a hint of a violin or a hint of a saxophone, but allow the user to take it and create a new instrument, maybe a hybrid between a, a wind and a, a bowed string or something that has um, a hybrid between a violin and an and a analog synthesizer sound or something like that, but allow someone to create their own sounds, but not be so limited by the standard oscillator filter model to be able to break that, you know? And physical modeling, I think, has potential, but no one's created a good human interface, a user experience for that. And I think the audio modeling company is perfectly positioned to do that. And it's hard to say. I think there are some possible cases where a machine learning could be used to help uh, perhaps a user experience, design a user experience. But uh, at the same time, we're in a unique position in, in creating electronic music instruments because we're looking for instruments that enhance the experience of someone expressing human creativity. Uh, and so many other areas of AI, we're looking to replace the human, but that's different with musical instruments. We're looking to augment the human's unique human skills. So it's hard to say how AI or machine learning would help in that regard, uh, but I'm, I'm sure I will be surprised because I've been surprised before. <laughs>